Hey, Christ Fellowship. I wanna welcome all of our camps to join us today and everyone joining us online, literally now from around the world. And a special shout out to all of our men and women serving in the armed forces. We love you. We love you. Don't miss next week, men. I've got a word for you, all right? It's a locker room word, all right? For the men of our church, God laid this word on my heart, and I can't wait to share it with you next week. So just be fired up, be here, and women, drag all the men to church next week, all right? We gotta come, we gotta get fired up. So I got a question to ask you today. Can they tell? Can they really tell? It's interesting in the Word of God that I was reading this past week about some men, and here's what it said about them. These two men, by the name of Peter and John, two of the disciples of Christ. And it's interesting that they're hanging out together, because you remember that when Jesus was brought to trial and he was crucified, Peter, the one that was so strong in the beginning, became so weak and ended up denying Christ, remember, three times. And then Jesus restored him after the resurrection. Jesus spent 40 days with his disciples before he ascended back into heaven. Now, John was the one who was pretty steady through that whole time. He was right there at the foot of the cross, holding the mother of Jesus, supporting everyone. And John was right there. He, he was Mr. Consistent. Peter was the one that was up and down, in and out. But these two guys were now brought before the religious leaders of Jerusalem, and here's what they said about these men. I want you to take note of this, found in Acts chapter four, verse 13. When they saw the courage of Peter and John, and they realized they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished. Now look at this next part. And these religious leaders took note that these men had been with Jesus. I love that. They took note that these men had been with Jesus. So I ask you the question, can they tell? Can they tell when they look at our lives that we have been with Jesus? Wow. You know, the, the one thing I, I know for sure and, and Don and I were talking about this because I was reading this, this word at home and I got all excited about this, this, this message that God was beginning to birth on my heart. And she said, well, I know the one thing, honey, the more time we spend with Jesus, the more it will show. Hello. Isn't that true about relationships? And by the way, you know, Don and I have been hanging out together for 56 years. And it shows. I mean, it's amazing how the little things we start doing alike the little preferences we have. And we can communicate without saying a word. I know exactly what she's thinking, and I know exactly what I've done wrong. <laughs> all she's gotta do is give me the, I know all of her looks, all of them. All of them, I'm getting one right now, it's pretty good, pretty good look right now. She's, but she's, the look she's giving me right now is saying, that's okay, don't go any farther with this. I picked up a crazy thing. I, I was hanging out with John Maxwell so much years ago, and we were traveling around the world doing stuff, launching uh, Equip, which is this leadership training development around the world, and I was with John so much that I started picking up a trait of his. Here's a trait that John has. He'll call you up. He'll say, hey, baby. That's the first thing he says, hey, baby. Well, I'm around him so much, it's all the time, hey baby, how's it going? Hey baby, hey baby. I never said hey baby before. I'm a football coach. I don't walk up to men and say hey baby. <laughs> but John, John's got this hey baby thing going on. I hung out with him, I came back home. We're in the middle of construction, I'll never forget it. We're in the middle of construction, one of, one of our projects here at Christ Fellowship. I walked to this hard hat guy, he's, he's He's a steel guy, okay? He's working with steel. I mean, you know, that's a man working with steel. I walked up to him and said, hey, baby. He 
looked at me like, what you saying to me, man? It, it, whoever you hang with, you pick up traits from those you hang with. You know, it's true, isn't it? Come on, baby. You know what I'm talking about. Well, the more we hang with him, the more it will show. So I get back to the question, can they tell? Can those we work with tell? And those in our neighborhood, can they tell? Those we go to school with, can they tell? Can they tell at the grocery store? Can they tell at the gas station? Can they tell wherever we are, whatever we're doing, can they tell? Is the question. There's a great story in, in, in Acts chapter three and chapter four. Matter of fact, the story is so great, it takes two chapters to tell it. Not many stories take two chapters in the Bible to tell. This one takes two chapters to tell. It's a double chapter story. I love it. So let's start with the first part of the story, okay? It's found in Acts chapter three. I'm gonna read the first 10 verses. Follow along as we read this story. Now one day, Peter and John, they were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at three in the afternoon. Now a man crippled from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful where he was put every day, notice that, every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. And when he saw Peter and John to enter, he asked them for money. Now note this in verse four. Peter looked straight at him, as did John. And then Peter said, look at us. And so the man gave them his, his attention, expecting to get something from them. But Peter said, silver and gold have we none. But what I do have, I will give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Now, then he taking him by the hand, look in verse seven, he took him by the, by the right hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong, and he jumped to his feet and began to walk, and then he went into the temple courts walking and jumping and praising God. Now, this created a scene. We're not even in church yet, and the guy's walking and jumping and praising God. If you drove into the parking lot today of any of our campuses and you saw them walking and jumping and praising God in the parking lot, you're gonna say, what is going on in this place? But this guy, he just had the power of God transform him and heal him. He could not contain it. I'll tell you what, the more radical your transformation, the less you can contain it. We've got a few that's been radically changed around here and they can't contain it at all. I mean, they're just kind of radical in their worship. Some of us, we're real placid and calm and peaceful about it, you know. And I tell you, some people have come from such a dark, crippled place that, man, they, you can't, they can't contain it. They just can't contain it. It's just, it just kind of erupts out of them. This guy couldn't contain himself. Now, let's get on here real quick. So, I'm in verse nine. And when all the people saw him walking and praising God, here's what I love, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. And then what happened when the people gathered around, Peter then used that as an opportunity to preach to them and tell them about Jesus. And as he was preaching, telling them about Jesus, isn't it interesting, the same guy who cowered it away is now bold and he's preaching about Jesus. Here comes the religious leaders up. All right, boys, you can't do this in the temple. They grab Peter and John, take them before the Sanhedrin, the, the religious elders of Israel, and now they're examining these men, quizzing these men, quizzing the crippled man. What really happened? Trying to get to the bottom of the story. They appointed a Senate committee. To get the, no, no, they didn't. Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> I couldn't resist that. Uh, anyways, um, Lord, help me get focused. So we go back. <laughs> and, and they're trying to examine all this, and they can't explain it. And then that's when they came to their senses and said, these are ordinary, uneducated, unschooled men, but 
Wow. We can tell they have been with Jesus. So what was it? What were the indicators that, that they could tell? Well, let me give you a few thoughts today that are some of the indicators that I think will release the evidence that we have been with him. Because one of the greatest traits of when we have been with him, here's what I know. The more time you spend with Jesus, the more he's gonna show through your life, amen? amen. So in the more time we've been with Jesus, the more compassion we have towards others. Compassion naturally flows out of us towards others because that is the very heart and character and nature of Christ himself. Look what Paul challenged the church in Colossians. He said, Colossians 3, 14, therefore as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself with compassion. I'll tell you one thing, when we when we get ourselves close to Christ, the compassion of Christ transforms us. And the more time we spend with him, the more his love changes us. And the more his love changes us, the more of his love flows out of us. Think about it. I love this quote from Mother Teresa. She said, to be able to have a heart full of compassion, we need to pray. Prayer unlocks that door of the intimacy in your relationship with God, and the love is so communicated and overwhelming to you in prayer. And I'm going to tell you something. Good things happen on the way to prayer. They were on their way to pray when they had this encounter with the crippled man. Good things happen on the way to pray. And one of the great things that happens when you pray and seek the heart of God and you're communing with God and developing that relationship with God and spending time with him in prayer is so critical because you become sensitive then to his voice. You recognize his voice. It becomes very quick and easy for you to recognize that voice. And not only do you become more sensitive to his voice, you become more sensitive to the cry of the heart of those around you. Now here's an interesting thing. They brought this lame man every day to the temple gates. This was not the first time that Peter and John walked by this man. I even believe that Jesus may have walked by this man because that entrance into the temple was a common entrance point into the temple. They brought him there every day. But in it is seen in this occasion, it was God's timing. God said, this is the timing I want for this man's healing so I can display my glory and wonder and get my message across to the hearts of the people of who I am, why I've come, and what I wanna do in their lives. God always had this divine timing for people and for us. And, and when we spend our time with him, the more time we spend with him, the more we can sense his timing, his plan, his purpose. And we can be an instrument used of God. What I have found that the more time I spend with God in prayer, the more sensitive I am through that day to sense a God moment. See, this was a God moment. God, God had a moment. Now, Peter and John were heading to the temple. They were not going there to heal this man. They were going to the temple to pray. It was a part of their their pattern, their, 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 their need. Their, they needed to go be refueled in the presence of God and in prayer. But God had a divine timing. And because this was a part of who they were as men, they had spent so much time with Christ. They had just spent 40 days with him. He had just ascended. And so as they're walking into the temple, They've seen that man begging. Listen, if you go to Jerusalem today, you will find as you go through the old city of Jerusalem, there are many that are begging. Wherever you go, they're begging. That's been something going on for thousands of years. But today, as they're walking by that man, the Holy Spirit touched their hearts and said, men, today's the day for this man's healing. Stop, give him what you have. Give him what you have that he cannot buy. And so they stopped. And, and I love this story because there's enough right here in this part of the message. 
What I love about it is their action. Notice their action. First of all, it says Peter looked straight at him. In other words, Peter focused on him. You know, we can look at people but not really see them. What I love about this is that Peter looked at him and he looked at him with spiritual eyes because I believe at that moment as he looked straight at him, he saw straight to the need of this man's heart. He sensed what God was going to do in this moment. And then he extended a hand. I love it. He didn't preach to the man. He didn't tell him, hey, what, if you, all you need is faith, man. If you have faith, you'll jump up and walk on your own. No, he didn't say that. He looked straight at him and said, listen, silver and gold have we none, but what we have in the name of Jesus, we have. You, you can stand up and walk, but, but I'm gonna help you do it. And look what he did. He reached out, took him by the right hand. There's something about the right hand, by the way, in the scriptures. I, I don't wanna go into that because I'll get distracted, but it represents the authority of God because Jesus says that the right hand of God, he represents the authority, the extension of God. When we extend the right hand of fellowship, of love, we're extending through the authority of Christ, not our authority. Thought I'd throw that one in free. A little footnote for some of you like a little deeper message that I normally give. Anyways, I just, help me, Jesus, don't stay focused. Okay, here we go. <laughs> He extends the right hand and he lifts him up. And it was only after he extended his hand and lifted him up that the transformation took place. Because see, what he was doing when he was extending his hand, he was extending his faith. We need to extend our focus, our hand, and our faith to people. This man did not have the faith to believe for himself, but Peter and John had the faith to believe for himself. Why did they have this faith? Because they had been spending time with Jesus. See, that's what I love about what our kids are doing this week in Belle Glade is we have about 900 of our students in Belle Glade. What are they doing out there? They're saying, you people matter to us in Belle Glade. We're extending our focus on you this week and we're extending our hand to you this week. They are lifting up that whole region this week and they're extending their faith and transformation is taking place in Belle Glade. You think about it. You think about what's going on out there. Well, here's what I simply know is the more time we spend with Jesus, the more we will focus on others. We. It's so easy to keep the focus inward when really God has ordained us as his followers to keep our focus outward. And the more time we spend with Jesus, the more we will want to lift others up. Don't you want to be known as a lifter? We live in a world where everybody's tearing everybody else down, looking for every angle to tear everybody else down, looking at every word we can use to tear everybody else down and take their words and tear them down. Praise God for the kingdom of God. We are different. The Bible says we are a peculiar people. You know what's peculiar about us? We don't get caught up in all that negative side of life. We have too much to be thankful for. We're trying to affirm and build people up. We stand out because we're speaking life over people. Here's what I love about Peter and John. They saw that man healed before he was healed. They saw the potential of him being a witness for the kingdom of God while he was still in a crippled state, but they saw him already in a healed state. And they, that, that gave them the ability to say, my focus is not inward, my focus is outward. Why? Because they've been with Jesus. They've been with Jesus. They've been spending time with Jesus. And the more time we spend with them, the stronger our faith is to believe for others when they cannot believe for themselves. Aren't you thankful that somebody extended their faith on your behalf? I tell you what, none of us came to Jesus on our own. Someone was there interceding for us. Somebody's faith was believing for us. Someone was setting the, the whole environment and tone for us to be in a place to receive what God had for us in our lives. Praise God, my mom's 95 years old. Tough as a pine knot at 95. I'm so thankful. She extended her faith to me over me when I was a child, praying over me every day, raising me, speaking the things of God over me. I'm so thankful that we're in a position to do that. The more time we spend with Jesus, the more we'll do that. And you know what else? The more time we spend with Jesus, the more we will be willing to invest our lives 
into the lives of others. We want to invest. We want to be more generous with our investment into the lives of others. That's what God's calling us to do. I was reviewing this week a story of one of our young men by the name of Rob who uh, was so depressed when he came to us that he was battling all these suicidal thoughts. And, and actually on the night he had contemplated how to take his life, there was a divine interruption of people who intervened into his life. And then the next thing you know, they drag him to a place called City Place. Peculiar place, City Place. Used to be an old Methodist church and then it became a performing arts center and then we stepped in there and reclaimed that ground to make it holy ground again and now CF, Christ Fellowship is there at City Place in the performing arts center there at the Harriet Himmel and they drug him up the steps and got him in there. It saved his life that night. But then what really transformed him was they started investing their lives in him. They were intentional about spending time with him. They were intentional about lifting him up. They were intentional about pouring their faith into Rob until one day it became very clear to Rob as they were lifting him up, he pulled himself up and he stood and made a decision to receive Christ. And then he was baptized. Now, he's investing his life in others. Aren't you glad you're hanging around people? That's what I love about Christ Fellowship. It's our mission to impact our world with the love and the message of Jesus Christ. Every one of us, every day, everywhere we go, we're on mission because we've spent time with Jesus. And they can tell when the compassion is there. You know, another thing I love about this story is that you have to go on and read in chapter four, but it's interesting in chapter four, in verse 18, when they, when they all got done with the evaluation, the, the elders of Israel, they commanded them to speak no more about Jesus. Here's what they said in verse 18. Then they called them in again and commanded them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. Look at their response in verse 20. As for us, we cannot help it. We cannot help speaking about what we have seen or heard. And they went on to tell him, would you rather have us obey man or God? He said, we cannot contain it. I tell you what, the more time you speak with Jesus, the less you can contain it. You have to let it out. You know what I found out? Whatever is your true passion will come out in your conversations. Whatever you're really passionate about, they will eventually come out. You cannot contain your passions. And when you spend time with Jesus and that becomes your passion, you cannot contain it. It will work its way out. It will work its way in to your conversations. People should know who we are. There should not be any guessing game about that. I love this verse in Philemon it's only one chapter, so it's verse six. But look at this verse. It's a great, it's a great verse. It says, Paul says, and he's talking to a, a very wealthy, prominent man, Philemon, and he says to him, I pray that you may be active in sharing your faith so that you will have a full understanding of every good thing we have in Christ. You realize that the more you share Jesus, the more you receive of not only the revelation of what he can do and the impact he can have upon the lives of others, but the more we share him, the more he reveals of himself to us. Wow. Can they tell? Can they tell? We have a businessman in our church by the name of Lester. He's been a very good friend of mine for over 20 years, and uh, I've traveled with Lester literally around the world and one thing about Lester is he's an evangelist who simply is a businessman because he loves to share Jesus. I've seen him lead people to Christ on just about every continent we've ever been on together. He's looking for someone to share Jesus with, okay? If I leave him in a hotel lobby by himself very long, 
he will have led somebody in that lobby to Jesus. I mean, that's the way he is. He just is so active in sharing his faith, but it wasn't always that way. He, he, he told me this story, and, I, and he told it again to me just this past week. He said, you know, Pastor, I was at my mother's funeral. His mother was taken in a tragic car accident, and he's, I'm standing there at, at her casket looking at my mother, and a woman walks up to me that I never met before, and she said to me, I'll be in heaven one day because of your mother. She shared Jesus with me. And the thought hit luster. He said, will anybody be in heaven because of my testimony? And then what really got him was this. He said a man walked up to him one day who he had been doing active business with for five years. And here's what the man said to him. And it floored Lester. Floored him. Here's what the guy said. He said, hey, Lester, I heard that you're a Christian. A friend of mine that's one of your friends who goes to church, he says, you go to church and that you're a Christian. I never knew you were a believer. Lester said, I knew this guy for five years. I'm doing business with him on a weekly basis, and he cannot tell that I'm a Christian. It rocked his world. It rocked his world. He said, man, I ran to the Lord in prayer. I ran to the Lord in his word. And he said, and then I realized I am never going to waste those opportunities again. I'm going to let people know. I'm going to let people know. And boy, he does now today. So I ask you the question, can, can they tell? Can they tell by your conversation that you have been with Jesus? You know, a third thing I love about these guys was after they got released, you know the first place they went? They went to church. They got with the followers of Christ, and, and, and it says they went in and gave them the report of what happened, and then they all started praying together, and then they started praising God together, and then you know what happened? The Spirit of the Lord came like he did on the day of Pentecost, and it says it filled them with such power and boldness that they went out proclaiming the Word of God boldly. Boldly. There's something about, let's put that back up on the screens. There's something about when we have, the more time we spend with Jesus, the more committed we are to be with his people, his church. Yeah. What are you doing this weekend? Oh, well, I'm, I'm going uh, to be at church on Saturday night, and, and then Sunday I'm probably going to be back over at church on Sunday because I'm going to be serving, working in, uh, in, in the student ministry, children's ministry. I'm saying, Wait, you, you mean you're not going? Where are you going this weekend? Oh, yeah, man, I, I always, I mean, I'm at church every weekend, man. That's like the most enjoyable thing, day of my week when I get to go to the house of God and hang with the people of God. Man, it's empowering to me. It's encouraging to me. It's enriching to me. It's transforming to me. I can't tell you how good it is to be with God's people. I, I like to hang out with champions because they bring the champion out in me. They fire me up. I need encouraged. I tell you what, you battle all week long. You need to go somewhere where you can be refreshed. Man, you ought to hang with me on the weekends because I'm hanging with people. They will lift you up. And when we lift up God together, there's something that happens when we praise God together. I'm committed to the house of God. I'm committed to the people of God. I'm committed to the work of God. I'm committed to the church. I'm not casual about that. These men weren't casual about it. All I know is this, the more time you spend with Jesus, the more you want to hang with his people. His peeps are my peeps. You know what I'm talking about? Come on. I want to hang with his people. I love this. I love this on the, in the message in 1 Peter 2, 17. It says, love your spiritual family. I love my spiritual family. I love the church. And of course, our pastor, Pastor Todd, preaches this all the time to us from Ephesians, and, and this is so good in Ephesians 1.23. And, and, and Paul's making a declaration. He's telling the church at Ephesus, now listen, guys, get this straight, because when you get this right, it brings everything else into balance in your life. So here's what he says. The church you see 
is not peripheral to it is, is not peripheral to the world. The world is peripheral to the church. All right, let me explain that. For some of you who have played football and have had a few concussions. <laughs> if something's peripheral, it's out here. You can barely see it, but you can see it. But it's not the center of your focus. And Paul says too often times, if we're not careful, the things of the world will capture our central focus and the things of God will be in the peripheral out here. We can see them, we recognize them, but they're not central to our focus. He said, no, 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 it's the other way around. You keep the church central to your focus, keep the things of the world over here peripheral, and he will bring balance to your life. That's, that's what he's calling, he said, right here. I tell you what, the more time you spend with Jesus, the more you will want to spend with his people, the church. And the more it will change you. I'm convinced one of the great secrets of marriage is that Christ is the center and the church is the center of your relationship. Don and I, from the, we were married on a Saturday night, Sunday morning, she made me go to church. Our first day, husband and wife, I didn't want to go to church. I wanted to be with my bride. My bride said, it's Sunday morning, we're going to church. We've been in church ever since. And all I got to say is, whoop, whoop, dead is, whoop, whoop, dead is. I'm talking about, <laughs> we, God has blessed us, enriched us. Our lives have been so enriched. Our children have been enriched. Everything about us has been enriched because we kept the church to the center and everything else on the peripheral. And Donna made sure of that. Amen? Amen. And the final thing, and this is what we're all about at Christ Fellowship, is the more time we spend with Jesus, the more we will witness lives that have been touched for eternity. Don't you want them to say about you one day, I'm heading to heaven one day because of their life, their compassion, their testimony to me. They introduced me to the greatest people in the world, God's people, the church. It's transformed me. Now I'm healed, now I'm whole, now, now I've been changed. I was reviewing this week with, with our, our, our pastor in, out in Okeechobee, the Okeechobee campus. Man, we love you guys in Okeechobee. You, you're awesome in Okeechobee. I love it. I, I, Okeechobee's where you can wear your cowboy hat to church. I love it. I mean, they may even be packing out in Okeechobee. I don't know, but I mean, but, but hey, Okeechobee, I love you, baby. I love you, Okeechobee. But Ashlyn was a woman who was imprisoned by her drug addiction. And in that imprisonment of that addiction, it was destroying her. Not only destroying Ashlyn, but it was destroying her marriage. It was destroying her family. She was desperate and helpless and crippled by this addiction. But praise God, there were some women in our Okeechobee church that extended the focus of their lives upon her. Then they extended a hand to her, and then they extended their faith to her. And they invited her to a prayer meeting, and they started praying with her, started helping her, started walking alongside of her, started giving her strength when she had no strength in herself. They gave her faith when she had no faith. Praise God today. Ashlyn is a changed woman. She's now reconciled with her husband and her family, walking strong and free. She might be jumping and shouting and praising God, but I know one thing, her life's been transformed. We're seeing lives transformed every week. One of the things I love about our staff meetings at Christ Fellowship, every Wednesday morning we have a staff meeting and all of our staff comes from all of our campuses. We gather here at the, at the Gardens campus 
and we review the stories of life transformation. We love it. God's doing an amazing work. So here's our simple challenge. We need to live lives that speak that we have been with Jesus. So I wanna challenge you, spend more time with him in prayer. And the more time you spend with him in prayer, the more you will begin to understand and be sensitive to hear his still small voice that will begin to guide you every step of your life. Spend more time with Jesus every day in the word and the wisdom of God will guide you every day and help you with your decision making and lead you on a pathway that is prosperous for you. Spend more time with him in worship. And when you do, he inhabits the praises of his people and you will be so enriched and encouraged. It will give you strength and courage and confidence for life so that you can go out and encourage others and bring transformation to them. Because see, once Jesus changes us, then we're in a position to help change others, amen? That's the call, that's who we are, that's the passion. That's the passion of Christ Fellowship. And the world will take note when they see transformation taking place, amen? Amen. Father, I pray that you will help each of us to be committed to spending more time with you. Jesus, we need to spend more time with you. Jesus, you even modeled that for us. You would separate yourself from your own disciples and here you are, the very son of God, but you would separate yourself to go off and pray in a quiet place. May we find that quiet place of prayer every day to get alone with you. Father, you are the living word. Jesus, you are the living word. May we spend time in your word so that you can speak to us and guide us and put us on that path that will lead us to victory and help others find that victory in their lives. And Father, we commit ourselves to hang with your people, the church, because it's in your presence as we worship together, as we serve together, as we minister together, as we reach out to this world together, we are simply better together. We're more powerful together. We have greater impact together. It is unlimited what we can do together. Transformation will take place when we are together before you. Father, our prayer is that they can tell and that they will be changed. So may your compassion flow through us. May your kindness and your words of life and encouragement flow through us. Father, I pray that our strength that we gather from each other, that we will be able to team up to lift up those around us. And there will be transformation We give you honor, we give you glory in all things in Jesus' name. I wanna ask our campus pastor to come now and pray with us as we close this service. And listen, this week, allow the Holy Spirit to help you to be sensitive to that one. You're to stop, look straight at them, extend a helping hand, and extend your faith and watch what God will do. God bless you, I love you. Wow, what a word for us, church. Would you stand to your feet? Help me thank Coach one more time for that incredible message that's fired us all up. Awesome word, Pastor. Hey, we were talking earlier. If you want to have a conversation with anybody, Thank our you. prayer team's coming yes, forward or stop by Next yeah, Steps. We'd love to get connected with you. Tomorrow night, City Nights, down in City Place, Pastor Andy Glass bringing the message. If you've got nothing to do on Sunday night, join us down at the Harriet. Have a great weekend, church. We love you. God bless you. We'll see you next weekend.